We have a massive Mikhail Bridges update from both sides between the New York Knicks and the Brooklyn Nets, and we have to break this down, so let's jump right into it. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Knicks Digest. It's Chris here, and we're going to jump right into the video, as we always do, because there's been a lot of noise about Mikhail Bridges over the last 48 hours when it comes to both the New York Knicks' interest in him and then also the Brooklyn Nets' interest in trading him. Now, recent reports have indicated that the Brooklyn Nets have been consistent in saying they're hoping to use Mikhail Bridges as a lure to bring in another star to Brooklyn and to build from there. They are not trading him for the number three pick in this draft. Nice try, though, Houston. And that comes from Basketball Talk on Twitter. And essentially, this is kind of a reiteration of what the Nets once said. Now, Joe Sy obviously made those remarks, and we did a video on it, basically saying you got to build the right way, build from the ground up through the draft. But Joe Sy does not care about if the Nets win or not. So even if Joe Sy is saying, yeah, well, this is what a winning team does, doesn't mean that it does not mean that he cares if the Nets do that. Joe Sy is getting money anyway. He's literally said as much. So whatever Joe Sy says. It does matter, but it doesn't matter that much as long as he's making money in his eyes. And we know the Nets, they're not a winning franchise, so it doesn't really matter. But Sean Marks and co. believe that Mikhail Bridges is as good as the guy that they traded for when they first acquired him from Houston, and he went up to averaging 26 points per game in those 20 or so games that he played for the Nets after he got traded to Brooklyn as part of the Kevin Durant deal. And also, I think part of it is that the Suns know he's kind of the last piece related to that KD Kyrie era. And they're kind of afraid to let them go as in him. And then also Cam Johnson, as they know, then they will have completely failed to capitalize on landing two stars. One of whom is in the NBA finals this year. One of whom is Kevin Durant, one of the 15 greatest players in basketball history. So clearly the Brooklyn Nets know that they're they're bas they've put themselves in a spot where they know they're just in this purgatory of too good to fully tank and they don't have their own draft picks even if they wanted to. They're way too bad to contend. So they're hoping Mikhail takes another leap and they can use him to lure another star, potentially someone like Donovan Mitchell who might favor going home, going to a New York team over success which first of all he's not going to do but let, let's just say that he would that's what the Nets are hoping for remember back in the day when the Knicks were terrible and our whole thing was oh we can land a free agent where in New York where the Knicks maybe someone will be enticed by the idea of wanting to come and be the Knicks savior and basically get that treatment that Jalen Brunson now gets now Brunson came in and actively said I'm not a savior I'm just here to play my part Jalen Brunson's now an NBA superstar, so he absolutely is a savior. But that's not even the point of this. We all know Brunson's the best. We love Jalen Brunson. He's just the man. But um, with the Nets, they want to bring a guy in who can save their franchise. Now, there's way less glory to saving the Brooklyn Nets since the Nets have all the 15 fans. So it doesn't really make a ton of sense on why they want to go this route. But it is one of the few options they can take. Now, if they're not going to trade Mikhail Bridges for that number three pick and maybe some of their other picks back, it's hard to imagine that they would trade Mikhail Bridges to the Knicks. Sure, the Knicks can offer him Boyan Bogdanovich and five first rounders, something that no other team could offer in an expiring deal and five first round picks. Most of them would have protections on it. It wouldn't be unprotected and stuff like that. But it would be five first round picks to maybe help Brooklyn get back on track and use a ton of draft assets in the Knicks picks and the Suns picks to flip it for a very, very, very good NBA star that could actually lure players to their team because they can just cause winning, maybe a Giannis, and this is a stretch for the Nets. But if they don't want to do that, that's fine. Because it seems like the New York Knicks don't want to do that either. And speaking of Giannis, Jake Fisher recently said in some scenario where like OG is no longer a part of New York, say he left in free agency, but I'm not expecting that. Also good news. That's only that's the only scenario where I think it could happen. The Knicks are targeting a Giannis level player with their draft capital. Now, what Fisher's alluding to is a Mikhail Bridges deal. This was in an interview and he was asked about Mikhail Bridges to the Knicks, and he said the biggest possibility of it happening is essentially that OG Ananobi just leaves in free agency. Fisher also said he doesn't see that happening. Neither do I. I've said it before already. Look. OG and Hardenstein are free agents. 
I don't, I think Hartenstein will come back. I'd say it's a 75% chance Hartenstein resigns. I'd say it's a 98% chance, 99, that OG on an OB resigns with the Knicks. So knowing that OG's going to resign, knowing you're going to have someone that does what McHale does, the Knicks are not going to be as focused on getting McHale Bridges. And sure, that makes sense, even though I think getting McHale would basically change everything for the Knicks and make them a true contender. They're targeting a Giannis-level player. Now, I'm going to do my own separate video on that. And we're going to break that down in way farther depth in the future. So make sure you're tuned in for that. So subscribe to the channel. But we'll talk about that in a bit. Now, it's also important to note that Bleacher Report recently talked about dream trade targets. And they said that McHale is for the Knicks, unsurprisingly. And they may, they basically mentioned that the Knicks have made their type known. Players like OG and Josh Hart, who are perimeter defenders with incredible basketball IQ, who never take plays off. Mikhail Bridges is of that same mold. Jalen Brunson's a primary scorer. Bridges can play a complementary offensive role somewhere between his responsibilities with the Suns and the Nets. So kind of more than we saw with the Suns, but less than we saw with the Brooklyn Nets. Now, they also pitched that Julius Randle would get swapped for Mikhail Bridges. As I talked about with the Laurie Markkinen video that, if I didn't screw things up, would have came out last night and not this morning, but whatever. I'm not perfect, guys. But um, with that... Julius is just so much better than Mikhail, dude. Why the hell would the Knicks do that trade unless the Nets are giving him two of the Suns' picks? And they're not going to do that. So, no, absolutely not. The Knicks are not going to trade Julius for Mikhail. That'd be stupid. Leon Rose knows it would be stupid, so he wouldn't do it because Leon Rose is incredibly good at his job. The Knicks would be trading Boyan in five firsts for Mikhail Bridges, but at this point, it feels unlikely that the Knicks are going to collect the final Nova Nick Infinity Stone. They will just stay with the four Villanova Knicks they have in Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, and Ryan Archdiakono, who I promise you will be back with the Knicks by the start of training camp in the fall. Guaranteed. Like, if anyone disagrees with me, we can throw money on it. Like, <laughs> Mikhail will... Mikhail. Ryan Archdiakono will be back calling out three seconds in the paint violations on defense, doing his thing at the end of the bench, basically just being an excellent teammate and an extension of the coaching staff, which we love to see from him. Now, Mikhail Bridges also spoke on how the Knicks are the real New York team. He talks about it on the Roommates podcast with Bronson and Hart, and you guys would rather listen to them talk than me, so you can hear his version of it there. But he also mentioned in a press conference after the Knicks lost to the Nets once in Barclays, or after the Nets lost to the Knicks once in Barclays, I should say, you feel like an away game at home. That's for probably any person sitting in here, any person alive, which he did say on Knicks fans at Barclays Center, giving basically boos to all the Nets fan, all the Nets players except for Mikhail because Knicks fans are smart. They know what's happening. And also just chanting Brunson for the MVP in Barclays, basically showing you guys don't have fans. You have a 3% stake in New York basketball fans. We're going to outnumber you every time we go into Barclays, and it's just always going to be that way. It takes you guys having KD, Kyrie, and James Harden to even sort of make the city kind of split. So you're certainly not doing it with, uh, ain't nothing funny. Uh, big broody, plays no defense, doesn't pass the ball man who only scores over 20 points per game because he's on a terrible team with no scores in Cam Thomas. He's overrated, I promise you. But I'm not here to bash Cam Thomas for being an annoying little child who's just weird. But Mikhail Bridges, he'd fit the Knicks. Look, he's hitting his assisted threes. He's shooting nearly half of his shots from beyond the arc. He's a great corner three-point shooter. He does fit that mold of Dante DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, and OG Ananobi. You add him in there, you have DiVincenzo as the sixth man. I think you're a finals contender. You got DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, Deuce McBride, Mitchell Robinson off the bench while McHale's the starting shooting guard and you have the same Knicks starting five. That team is winning an NBA finals. I mean, these field goal and free throw numbers, or these field goal and three-point numbers, they're only low because he had to play a different role that does not impact his offense well. He's also not going to average 19.6 points to the Knicks. He'd probably go down to 15, and he'd be back to being one of the best on-ball defenders in the league because he could focus on that. And we also know Mikhail wants to be on the Knicks. It's not a secret. Everyone knows it. He literally took a lie detector test, and Josh Hart asked, would you ever want to be teammates with me again? And Mikhail said yes, and it was proven to be true. We know Mikhail wants to be on the Knicks, but unfortunately, he can't force his way to the Knicks. He's not going to force his way off the Nets because then the Nets are going to trade him somewhere where he's not going to be in the same city as three of his best friends. 
So I think he's fine with this. He'd rather be a Nick, but he's not going to screw up a decent enough situation that he has, what he can walk in a few years, and then sign with the Knicks if he so chooses. Guys, I don't think the Knicks are getting Mikhail this summer. I wish they were. He's who I want, but I understand why the Knicks might shoot for the stars a little bit higher. We're going to do a video on that ASAP. It'll either be out tonight or sometime tomorrow. And also, guys, tune in. We're doing the live stream a little earlier because there are the NBA Finals tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. So probably around 6.30, we're going to hop on the live, maybe finish around somewhere between 7.30 and 8. So I can give you guys a little bit of time to set yourselves up, watch these NBA Finals. And as Knicks fans, I don't know, root for no one to win? I have no idea. Also, let me know who you guys want to see win the NBA Finals because I hate the Celtics and I hate the Mavericks fan base. So it's kind of rough for me right now, guys. I want to know if you guys feel the same, but also make sure to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Turn on post notifications. Leave a comment down below. I'll get back to you there. Have a great day. Go Knicks, baby.